everybody, this is Maddie. Welcome to the House of Geek, and this is the first episode of the Gaming News Channel. You'll see my friend Betsy over there is displaying the upcoming release dates for new games as I read the first news article. Do not expect more content for Devil May Cry 5 anytime soon. This is by Emron Khan and was released April 24th, 2019. Capcom has always had a reputation of putting out new expansions for games in new forms, whether it be fighting game revisions or content updates like Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. The Devil May Cry series has seen its share of this as well. Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition retooled the game and added extra content like a playable Virgil. The Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition took few years but added multiple playable characters to the mix. Even DMC Devil May Cry got a retooled and rebalanced definitive edition on newer consoles. It would make sense that Devil May Cry 5, Capcom's extremely successful fifth game in the series, would very quickly get some new content, perhaps in the form of more playable characters from the game's story as maybe DLC. It turns out that's not so, as it looks like development for the game has more or less wrapped, according to producer Matt Walker who appeared on Twitter last night to answer fan questions. So Brian Washington asked, I've been hearing rumors of a ladies' night DLC. Is there any validity at all to these, or is DMC5 finished? Matt Walker, unfortunately, dev on DMC5 is finished. I'd personally like to see the ladies playable too. We can only hope that at some point we can convince the people up top that it's worth doing. This does leave the door open for a future special edition down the road, but at the moment it does not look like there's anything more being worked on for the game. A tweet earlier this month from director Hedekai Itsuno seems to indicate that now the Bloody Palace mode is out. He has already moved on to whatever his next project may be. Um, it was joint cherry blossom viewing of the DMC5 team and the new project team. So there is that Twitter. Before the game's launch, Itsuno also said that he was given the choice between Dragon's Dogma 2 and Devil May Cry 5, and he chose the latter. We could own, we could theoretically be in for another seven-year wait for a special edition of Devil May Cry 5, but if it means there's a Dragon Dogma sequel in the middle, I can live with the wait. Devil May Cry 5 is currently available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I could give a crap less if the females become playable. To me, the whole thing is playing um, with these particular games, in my opinion, playing the main character. If the main character happens to be a male, cool. If it happens to be a female, cool. If it happens to be a half-dog alien from outer space, cool. I don't care what the main character is, but if it is a story-driven type game, I like those. I also like MMOs and RPGs. Um, so, you know, I like to play the main character in story-driven games. So, yeah, if they do a woman, fine. If they don't, fine. I'm, I'm not going to make much of a deal out of that at all. All right, on to the next story. Epic would stop exclusivity deals if Stream committed to a permanent 88% revenue share for all developers and publishers. All right, Epic is the new game store that is having a lot of problems because a lot of people have weighed the pros and cons, and there are more cons about this gaming store than there are pros. One meaning there is no offline play mode. You have to be connected to the internet to play any of the games out of the Epic Store, which I think is a major con. Um, I like the option through Steam to be able to play some of the games that I like to play without needing an internet connection. Uh-oh, Tim Sweeney's been tweeting again, and this time he's really stirring the pot by declaring Epic would stop signing new exclusives if Steam committed to a permanent 88% review share for all developers and publishers without major strings attached. In the unlikely event of this actually happening, Sweeney says Epic would even consider putting its own games on the Steam store. Such a move would be a glorious moment in the history of PC gaming and would have a sweeping impact on other platforms for generations to come, Sweeney enthused. Uh, the 88% figure is the current amount the Epic Game Store gives to developers and publishers, with the store itself taking the remaining 12% of the revenue. Steam currently offers developers a tiered revenue split, the lowest being a 70% share for games selling under $10 million. Titles that hit the $10 million mark get a 75-25 split, while the really big blockbusters that sell over $50 million allow developers to keep 80% of the revenue. 
As Sweeney explained in later tweets, no major strings attached means games can use any online systems like friends and accounts they choose. Games are free to interoperate across platforms and stores, and the store doesn't tax revenue on other stores or platforms, such as playing Fortnite on both PC and iOS. Both points, bonus points, excuse me, go to being able to play the game on multiple platforms with stuff you've bought being available everywhere with no onerous certification requirements. Essentially, the spirit of an open platform where the store is just a place to find games and pay for stuff, Sweeney added. This isn't the first time, this isn't the first time Epic has suggested eventually ending its exclusivity policy. At this year's GDC Epic Games Store chief Steve Allison said the company will at some point go to zero or very, very few exclusives per year. For now, though, Sweeney says the company plans to stay the course, explaining 30% store dominance is the number one problem for developers and publishers, an issue Epic is determined to fix with its exclusives approach. Um, let's see, and it says, uh, it's unlikely Steam will call Sweeney's bluff on the 88% offer, which seems more like an attempt to rebuild goodwill towards the Epic Games Store. Epic's revenue split may be more generous towards developers, but others have criticized its exclusive exclusivity deals on the grounds they give no immediate benefits to customers. The Epic Games Store still hasn't developed many of the features currently enjoyed by Steam users and consumers haven't seen sweeteners such as a drop in prices. In a recent GDC interview with Eurogamer, Sweeney explained Epic is currently focusing on fixing the supply side economics of the game business with Steam unlikely to budge. It looks like the situation won't be changing in the near future. Now we have this one over here from segmentnext.com. All these links will be in the description below. So again, it says Epic Games to stop exclusivity deals if Steam commits to 88% developer revenue share. So, yeah, and it says here that Epic Games have been making deals with developers and publishers to make their games timed Epic Store exclusives, meaning Epic Store only titles. This isn't sitting well with PC gamers, and Epic Games CEO has noted that if Steam commits to the 88% developer revenue share, then he would consider dropping exclusivity deals. Um, why are you going after Steam? That's my question. I mean, obviously you don't agree to their split tier program, but a lot of other developers don't have a problem with it. Otherwise, they wouldn't publish games to Steam. As a matter of fact, on the Reddit thread, um, in conjunction with the Eurogamer article that I read first, there is a developer here. Let me see if I can scroll and find it again. Let's see, here we go. I can only speak for myself, but as a developer, I value my time and try to avoid reinventing the wheel. The Steamworks API makes a lot of things very easy to implement. Uh, for example, joining on friends, matchmaking, workshop support, cloud saves. That's a lot of time and therefore money saved. Additionally, Steam gives you access to a massive potential audience. How you reach that audience is up to you. The big releases they are losing aren't really all that massive. Even Bethesda is coming back to Steam after their whole launcher thing, and you can bet that they will all release on Steam after the exclusivity period. So um, that is part of the discussion that's going on with the Eurogamer article. My whole thing is there's so many things. I haven't seen any positive reviews about the Epic Store myself. And as such, I'm probably not going to be downloading it. I mean, I'm already on Steam. I'm on Arc Games. Um, I play MMOs like Lotro, um, WoW when I can re-up the subscription, and D&D, the Neverwinter MMO, and, and like that. But um, I can't see myself downloading yet another game store, especially one that I can't play without an internet connection. Because I don't see any sense in that. I really don't see any sense in that. But enough with my opinion. What's your opinion? That's what the comment section is for. Let's start that conversation going down below. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you like this content and want to see more, that's what that red subscribe button is for. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and hit that bell. What good that bell does, God only knows. But hopefully it will no notify you next time I upload something. Um, all my all my shilling links as well as source links are in the description box. Have a nice day.